Welcome back to my channel. Today we will continue with chapter 6, Circular Motion. So in this video, we will discuss on vertical circular motions. Okay, so we will start with question number 7. A sphere of mass 5 kg is tied to an elastic string. It moves in a vertical circle of the radius 55 cm at a constant speed of 3 m per second. Okay, so by the end of free body diagram, determine the tension in the string at point A, point B, and also point C. Okay, so here, what are the information they give to us? They give us the mass and the radius. And also, they give us the constant speed. Okay, so we look at point A first. Huh? Point A, we need to draw free body diagram for point A. Where at point A, we have mass, mg. Beside mass, we also have tension. Okay, because this is the string tied with the sphere, so we also have the tension. Okay, so at point A, at point A, our free body diagram is we have mg, and also we have tension. Okay, next we go to point B. Okay, at point B we have mg, and this is the string. So string is always uh, up from the object okay so this tension is to the left okay so at point b our free body diagram is mg and tension is to the left okay next we go to point c okay point c here mg of course is always acting downward and tension is up from the object okay so for this point c our free body diagram is tension is upward mg is downward okay so we go to number one first okay number one we know that our f net f net is actually the centripetal force and centripetal force is always towards the center so at point a our centripetal force also is into the center okay so our f net is equal to mg plus tension why mg plus tension because same direction with the f net okay so our f net here actually we are referring to f c lah, centripetal force equals to mg plus tension okay so we want to find tension so tension becomes subject tension is equal to fc minus mg okay you substitute the value inside uh, we have v and also r so we will use nv squared over r minus mg to find the tension okay so you substitute all the value inside where we have uh, mass is 5 v is 3 square r is 55 cm so it's 0 0.55 minus mg 5 g is 9.81 okay so you will get tension a is equal to 32.77 Okay, next we go to point B. Okay, point B if we refer here, and our F net or the centripetal force is always towards the towards the center. So this is our F net. Okay, so now we want to find our F net or the uh, centripetal force. Okay, so our centripetal force here is provided because there is a tension only, eh, because mg is y component. Okay, so now we are referring to Fc. Fc only involves x component. Tension and Fc is same direction, so it's Fc equals to tension. So therefore, our tension is equal to nv square over r. Okay, so you substitute the value m is equal to 5, v is equal to 3 square. And the radius is 0 0.55. Okay, so for tension B, our answer is equals to 81.8 Newton. Okay, so this is the answer for tension at point B. Okay, next we'll go to tension to find tension at point C. Okay, so if you refer back to this point at point C, our centripetal force is towards the center, meaning that our centripetal force or F net is upward. Okay, so our FC is equal to same direction, T and FC same direction, so it's positive, plus negative MG. Why negative? Because the directions of MG and the uh, centripetal force 
is opposite direction. Okay, so we write tension equals to Fc plus Mg, where Fc is nv square over r, mg. Okay, so you substitute the value five. V is three square. R is zero point five five plus five times nine point eight one. So our final answer you will get one hundred thirty point nine newton. Okay, so remember to write newton. Okay, so conclusion is if the answer. Okay, if we based on the answer, we know that at the point A tension is thirty two. Point B is eighty one. At point C, okay, TC is one hundred and thirty point nine newton. Okay, so meaning that at top tension at top is actually minimum. Okay, and tension at bottom at point C is actually maximum. Okay, so if the question asks us at which point, at which point the String will easiest to break, meaning that at the bottom, the string will easily break, ah, because at that time our tension is maximum. Okay. Next, we will go to the questions related to Ferris wheel. Okay, so Ferris wheel here is the second case, ah, where ah we are referring to the ah people sitting on the Ferris wheel. Okay, so we look at the questions. A rider of the Ferris wheel. Okay. Is move in a vertical circular radius. So our first equation, first informations we have is eight meter with the constant speed. If the time taken to make one rotation is ten second, okay. So they give you the omega one rotation, one revolution in ten second, and the mass of the rider M is sixty kg. Okay, calculate the normal force exerted on the rider. Okay, so we want to find the normal force on top and also at the bottom. Okay, so we refer here. Okay, so here we must draw a free body diagram first, where our mg is always acting downward, and because the rider is sitting on the Ferris wheel, okay, so the normal force acting is upward. Okay, so meaning that at top, at top, our free body diagram is normal, and this is mg. Okay. And our centripetal force is acting downward, lah, because it's always towards the center. Okay, this is the center. Okay, the second one is our uh, bottom. Okay, at bottom here, if let's say this is a Ferris wheel, okay, and mg is downward, and our normal force is upward. Okay, so at top, okay, at right here, at top. Our free body diagram is similar, normal, and also mg, but our centripetal force is towards the center, meaning that our centripetal force is upward. Okay, so if we refer back to our, we want to find the normal force exerted on the top. Okay, so we go to this equation first on the top. F net is equal to mg minus normal because mg is towards the center. Okay, so we want to find normal. Normal force is equal to mg minus n v square over r. N v square over r is is a centripetal force. Okay, so we substitute into the equation sixty nine point eight one minus sixty v is not given. Okay, but they give us the omega. Okay, so if we give you the omega, we can use r omega square. Okay, so now omega is equal to one revolution. One revolution is equal to two pi over ten second. Okay, so two pi over ten second. So here I don't want to use n v square. I will use m r omega square. Okay, because I don't have v. Yeah, so I will use m r omega square. Okay, so I will use m r omega square. M is sixty. R is uh eight meter. Omega is two pi over ten square. Ah, remember to square. Okay, so if you press calculator, sixty times nine point eight one. Okay, and then minus m r omega square. Okay, you will get three hundred ninety eight point eight newton. Okay, so this is the normal force exerted. Okay, to the rider. Okay, next one we goes to. 
at the bottom. Okay, at the bottom here, we based on this free body diagram. Okay, our FC is equal to normal uh, because normal and the FC, the, the F net or the centripetal force is same direction. So we take normal minus mg. Okay, so FC I will use mr omega square equals to normal minus mg. Okay, so since we want to find normal, so I will take normal equals to mr omega square plus mg. Okay, mr omega square plus mg. So you substitute the value. m is 60, r is 8, omega is 2 pi over 10 square plus m 60, g is 9.81. So finally, we will get 778.4 Newton. Okay, so you press calculator, you will get 778.4 Newton. Okay, so meaning that again, the normal force ejected on the rider at uh, at the bottom. Okay, at the bottom is greater. Okay, sorry, this is not top one. This is bottom. Sorry. Okay, next one we will go to the third case. Huh? Okay, third case is a, a small remote control car with the mass. Okay, so they give you the mass is equal to 1.2 kg. Move with a constant speed, V is 15. In a vertical circular circle track of the radius. Okay, so figure shows uh, above. Okay, determine the magnitude of the reaction force exacted on the car. Okay, by the track. Okay, so meaning that this is the car and the the normal force uh, or the reaction force exacted on the car by the track here okay so if we refer to the bottom here mg is downward and because there's a contact with the track so the normal force or the reaction force is upward okay similar for here mg of course is downward and the contact surface with the car okay the normal force also acting downward okay so meaning that at point b at point b is at top Okay, so I will draw it here. At point B, at point B meaning at top, our free body diagram is normal, downward, mg also downward, centripetal force also into the center. Okay, into the center. Okay, so meaning that our FC will equal to normal plus mg because normal and mg is same direction. Okay, so mv square over r equals to normal plus mg okay so since we want to find the reaction force the normal force so we will take uh, mv square over r minus mg okay so you substitute all the value m is 1.2 v is 15 square r is 3 minus 1.2 9.81 okay so finally, if you press calculator, we will get 78.2 Newton. Okay, so this is at point B at the top, uh, the normal force. Okay, next one, I will go to at the bottom, at point A. Okay, so at point A, okay, at point A, or at the bottom, okay, our free body diagram is normal upward. Mg downward and our centripetal force is towards the center, right? Because it's always acting towards the center, so it's acting upward. Okay, so Fc here will equal to normal because same direction minus okay or plus huh? plus negative mg. Okay, because why negative? Because it's opposite direction with the centripetal force. Okay, so again normal force will equal to fc plus mg okay so where fc is nv square over r plus mg okay so you substitute the value inside m is 1.2 v 15 square remember to square r is 3 m is 1.2 g is 9.81 so finally we will get 101.8 newton Okay, so again at the bottom the, the reaction force at the acting exacted on the car is actually greater or uh, compared with point B. Okay, so that's all for today. So we'll go to the next video.
I'll continue with the conical pendulum. Okay, so see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.